joking. We haven't even started yet. Welcome, 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 welcome around our campfire. The place to get some healthy shivers down your spine. Watch your back. Curl up in a safe corner. Relax and get ready for our scary campfire story. Our tale of today has got to do with our long lost love and the unbreakable but haunting connection between two people. We have titled it The Shortcut. A scary campfire story written by Aska, brought to you by Outdoor Loon. Roy drives home after attending the wedding of his ex-girlfriend, Marianne. Their love never really vanished. But her family is happy to see him marrying a decent guy today. Witnessing the love of his life marrying some bloke has left him heavy-hearted on the way back. During the long ride home, a woman in a white gown suddenly appears along the road. How the hell did she get here in the middle of nowhere? He decides to give the poor thing a lift home, which turns out to be an unexpected destination. What started as a good deed ends in pure tragedy. If only Roy had looked closer at his passenger, It had been a nice day, the first week of April 2019, and it had gotten warmer than usual this time of year. I think about how beautiful Marianne had looked. I had not been allowed to see her before the ceremony, although it had not been me waiting for her at the altar. When she finally appeared, a pang of jealousy shot through my chest. Afterwards, I'd looked for a private moment to congratulate her. Meanwhile, dodging all kinds of ex-in-laws. There had been cake, there had been a dance, there had been more ridiculous formalities than I could bear. Clichés we had once promised each other never to give in to. I approached her as she was taking off her heels. And for a second, I thought she looked just as bored as I was. She smiled when she saw me, and I kissed her on the cheek. She told me how much it meant to her that I had come, more than the dozens of great aunts and uncles that could not help but remark that it was a blessing she decided to marry a decent guy with a decent career after all. I could not hate her, and had she not been whisked away from me after five minutes, <sighs> I would have stayed with her all day. Now I slam the door of my car shut and light up a cigarette before I take off. I still have quite a drive ahead of me and twilight is already setting in. For a moment. 
I consider pumping the gas once or twice as I last so long to all the old stuck-up corpses I will probably never see again. But I decide I'm too grown up for that now. If only I'd grown up a little earlier, I might not have lost Marianne. The drive home goes faster than I had planned. The shortcut Marianne told me about might save me almost an hour. I probably shouldn't have had that sixth beer, but there's no one else on the road now. And I let myself speed up more and more. Motley Crue blasts through Roy's speakers, contributing to his mood and sense of freedom. It keeps darkness surrounding him at distance too. He always gets nervous on these unlit forest roads. Roy needs to take a leak though. There's no sign of a lamppost anywhere, so I skim the sides of the road that are not too dense and dark. Then, as I turn my eyes back on the road again, a white shape flashes past my front window and I hit the brakes. With a screeching sound, my old Volvo comes to a stop, my heart beating frantically. What was that? For a second, I am too scared to even look around, but when my breath starts calming down, I get angry. Some tough guy you are, <laughs> scared of ghosts now. I turn the engine off and get out of the car. There's no one in sight. Might just as well take that leap now. Roy walks towards the roadside, unzipping his pants, letting go of all that beer feels like heaven, and his nerves make way for a feeling of relief. Satisfied, he turns around, only to freeze again. Today it had gotten warmer than usual this time of year, but temperature had suddenly dropped. Someone was waiting for me, next to my car. A woman in an odd white gown, shivering. Where the hell did she come from? With her hair in updo they considered fashionable in the 50s, she looks not altogether real, almost like a hologram even. But when I walk up to her, calling, hey! Her eyes flicker. She looks pale and distraught, picking at a worn-out bride's bouquet. Can I help you? I ask. Who are you? I touch her shoulder. She feels cold to the bone. Without a second thought, I take off my jacket and put it on her. Hey, talk to me. Where did you come from? She clears her throat as if she had not spoken in ages. Will you take me home? She asks. Well, obviously, I reply, uh, I'm not going to leave you here at this hour. Here, hop in. I open the passenger door for her and she gets into my car. I make sure her gown doesn't get stuck between the door and briefly observe it. Who gets married in an old-fashioned dress like this anymore? She looks way too young to get married anyways. Where do you live? I ask as soon as I sit behind the wheel again. Misselburn Street, Waldbridge. 
Misselburn Street it is, I say, starting my car. Wait, what? We're nowhere even close, Walt Kirch. This is going to take hours. How did you end up here? I wait for a response, but she just keeps glaring out of the window. As if I had not asked her anything. All right, then. We drive and drive, and I keep asking her questions that remain unanswered. If I were not this curious, I would definitely be in a bad mood now. I'm hungry, we're getting low on gas, and she could at least do me the courtesy of a decent response. And let's hope there's a motel somewhere around Walkers, because I'm not getting home anytime soon. After a drive that seemed to last a century, I finally spot the distant lights of our designated town ahead of us. But then suddenly she speaks. Turn left. Not realizing we were closing in on a junction, I turn left. We hit a gravel path and my eyes try to focus in the dark. It's a long lane we're driving through, but I can see a house looming in the distance. It looks desolate. As we pull up, I could swear it is abandoned. Still, she must know the place. I get out of the car, scan the surroundings, and walk around to open the passenger door. But the passenger seat is empty. What is this? Where did she go? I look once more into the empty car. I look around me and I look at the house. I start walking. There is a light and I swear I saw something. I climb up on the porch, walk up to the door and knock. Twice, three times. Just as I'm about to try and open the door myself, I hear someone shoveling inside. The door opens slowly, and in front of me stands a woman that looks at least 90 years old. Yes? she asks. I don't know where to begin. I'm here with her daughter granddaughter who suddenly disappeared on me i stammer but before i can begin telling her she interrupts me you brought back my alice alice after 50 years you brought back my alice she repeats 50 years what are you talking about poor girl poor poor girl so young she was was what do you mean she was? She was just here. Where did she go? She has my jacket. I start yelling, trying to get something out of this old lady. Unaffected, she points out to the deep end of the garden surrounding the lot. Where she always goes. I am so sorry. I start running towards the far end of the garden, all the while she keeps on muttering I am sorry, I am so so sorry, that road, it's that cursed road. Not before I hit my foot on a stone I come to a stop. It's a gravestone. And on that gravestone is my jacket. Time stops. Reason stops. Too many questions hit my brain at the same time. I pick up my jacket, I read, and I go numb. In loving memory of Alice Carpenter, April 15, 1947, July 24, 1969. My feet have decided to start running before I know what's happening. I need to get away. I slip over the gravel, cut open my hands, drop my keys, pick them up again to fumble them in the lock, and I slam the gas. 
I speed and speed, all the while hearing the old lady's words in my head like a mantra. It's that road. It's that cursed road. It's that road. It's that cursed road. Marianne! I almost lose control over the wheel as I grab my phone to dial Marianne's number. Pick up! Pick up! Roy, are you home yet? Marianne, listen! I try. Thank you so much for coming today, Roy. It means so much to me. We have just finished up cleaning, heading back home right now. Marianne, where are you? I start yelling again. Roy, what's wrong? We should be home in an hour. We're taking that shortcut I told you about. No, wait, Marianne, you must turn back that road! But before I can finish my sentence, I hear a scream, a deafening crash, glass bursting. And then, nothing. The phone line goes flat. Did you know that getting the chills down your back every now and then is actually a good thing? It helps us exploring emotions and can form an experience that brings the group together. We seek out the thrill of being scared by a story and put this feeling in perspective afterwards. In a protected environment amongst friends, the feeling of anguish evaporates quickly to make place for excitement. You were able to imagine being in a dangerous situation, even though you are in a safe place now. A typical ghost story teaches us a lesson. When you don't let yourself be carried away by fear, you will overcome any danger. This was it for our scary campfire story, The Shortcut. I hope you liked it and that it scared the hell out of you. It certainly gave me goosebumps the first time I read it. Subscribe to our channel if you want to listen to following stories. Thank you very much for listening and let me know if you liked it by rating it on iTunes or on whichever platform you were listening. We would even more super duper appreciate it if you left a comment about the show on our website, outdoorloon.com slash podcast. Now, nighty night, sleep tight.